Travis. Hi, Wang. Um, this is our fourth video lecture for the probability graduate level class. And today we want to finish up what's chapter one in our book uh, in talking about uh, independent events where there's more than one event involved. And also allude, allude to something called pairwise independence. And then we want to start chapter two, which has to do with random variables. In particular, what we're going to talk about today are discrete random Let's go ahead and get started. So, um, the first thing I want to do is to make a definition. And it says the events E1, E2, up to EN are said to be independent. If uh, for any or for all, uh, I'll say any subcollection. So no matter what subcollection you take, let's say e sub one prime, e sub two prime, all the way up to e sub r prime of the original. collection of events. E1, E2, go up to EN. So this is some subcollection of these. And no matter which ones you, no matter uh, what subcollection that you take, then the probability of E1 prime intersect E2 prime intersect all the way up to E R prime will be equal to the probability of E one prime times the probability of E two prime uh, times all the way up to multiplication by the probability of E R prime. So that's what it means to be independent. So no matter what subcollection you take, this relationship holds. For all the subcollections you take, this relationship. Let's look at an example. Let's let and earn contain four balls. Um, number, the balls are numbered. One, two, three, and four. Those how we distinguish the balls from each other. Um, a ball is chosen at random and its number no. I'm going to let E be the event that you got the one ball or the two number ball. I'm going to let uh, G, I'm sorry, F, be the event. You got the one ball or the three ball. And G, be the event. You got the one ball or the four ball. The question is, are the events E1, E2, E, F, and G independent or not? Okay, to do this, we're going to have to find the probabilities of several things. Okay, 
let's first note that the probability of E intersect F, so E was that you got the 1 and 2 ball, L was you got the 1 and 3 ball. That's really the probability that you got the 1 ball. Well, with every ball equally likely to be chosen, the answer to this is 1 and 4. The probability of E intersect G, well, E was getting the 1 or 2 ball, G was getting the 1 or 4, or four ball, so that's still the probability of getting the 1 ball, which we know to be 1 4. The probability of, of um, E, well, wait a minute, let me do uh, uh, F intersect G. That's the probability of F was getting one and three, one and four, that's probably probability of getting one ball. And that's the probability. Now, also, we have that the probability of E, well, that's probability of the one ball or the two ball. And that was equal to two out of three, or one half. And I'll just say, that's the same thing as the probability of L, and that's also the probability of G. Because they're all one half. Okay. Now, uh, so, what we have is the probability of E intersect L, well, that's one four. But it also equals to the probability, well, it's also equal to one half times one half, which equals to the probability of E times the probability of F. Similarly, the probability of E intersect G equals to the probability of E times the probability of G. So when I take the, the subcollection of B and G, it works. When I take the subcollection of E and L, the independence criteria is working. Take the subcollection for E, F, and G of just F and G, you'll also see the probability of F intersect G, that's equal to 1 fourth, which is equal to the probability of F times the probability of G, as each one of these is 1 half. So for all subcollections of e, and, uh, e, F, and G that has two uh, elements, uh, the criteria we need to have satisfied for independence is satisfied. For every one, of course, it's going to be satisfied. But when you take all three, the probability of E intersect L intersect G, well, this is one and two, one and three, one and four. The only thing they have in common is one. And that's equal to one four. That does not equal to uh, does not equal to the probability of B times the probability of L times the probability of G. Because this is one half times one half times one half, which equals to one eighth. So right there we see E, F, and G are not independent. Because I could find a sub, a sub collection E, F, and G, such that if I take the intersection of that sub collection, it's not equal to the multiplication of the probabilities of each one of them. The probability of the intersection of that sub collection is not equal to the probability of each individual one of them multiplied together. But, or however, we can say uh, E. Uh, F and G 
are pairwise independent. Uh, that means for any two of the events, the probability of the intersection between these two events equals uh, the multiplication of the probabilities of each event. And we showed that with the work done that ended here, the probability of f intersect g was equal to the probability of f times the probability of g, and the other two things we showed on the uh, left hand side of the board. Next, we're going to get into chapter two of our text. And although I'm covering concepts that are listed in the text, I might not be doing the exact same examples, uh, but, but this is what the information is. So in chapter two, it deals with something that's going to be a topic that's going to be reoccurring throughout the rest of the course, and that's random variables. So what is a random variable? Well, its definition is a random variable is a function whose domain is the sample space. takes outcomes to each outcome, it assigns it to a real number. So as an example, a coin could be tossed then our sample space, if you remember, is heads and tails. And so what I'll define is x of h to be equal to 1 and x of t to be equal to zero, so I'll let that happen. Then x is a random variable. That's one example. Another example is that, let's say, a uh, person um, will arrive at a 
バッシャー at some time between 5 p.m. and 5:30. Uh, we're going to let x be the time after 5 p.m. that the person arrives. Then x is a random variable. It's an example of one of the uh, actions of x. If we say x of of five twenty three point two, so this is. 523.2, that, that's the time that we have. Uh, then the answer here for the uh, alpha value would be 23.2 minutes. So that's what x does. Those are different types of random variables, even though each one of the examples that I did are random variables. But we're going to do one more example. So another example of a random variable. So we're going to let x count the number of potholes along a specific one mile stretch. Well, um, I had mentioned about uh, the previous two examples not being the same types of random variables. And so uh, at this point, I want to give a, a definition and classification of a specific type of random variable. And that is um, a discrete random variable. So a random variable. is a discrete random variable if um, x has at most countable number of outcome values. What we mean by countable, it means that it's the same number as the uh, number of natural numbers, is what you mean countable. And at most countable means you're either finite or have the same number of output values as uh, the set of natural numbers.
the, the uh, ex examples, the pothole uh, random variable example is a discrete random variable. The coin toss example is a discrete random variable. The bus stop example is not a discrete random variable. We'll learn about it later. So those are three things we've had. I'll give a new one. Several times. So if we let uh, suppose a card is selected at random from a well shuffled standard deck. Then define x of let's say a heart. So that's x defined on 13 of the possible outcomes. Let's let it be minus 1. x of a black card, let's let that be equal to uh, 3. And x of a diamond. Let's let that be 2. Then that particular random variable is a discrete random variable. Well, um, so that we can get kind of information about random variables, uh, we're going to try to relate, uh, really, through random variables, we're trying to relate probabilities uh, to, uh, especially complicated probabilities, uh, to calculus. And so what we'll say is we'll make the following definition that uh, associate. to a discrete random variable x is a function, I'll call it f of little x, called the probability mass function. So here, um, the little f of little x 
is to find the mean probability that x is equal to that particular little x value. So this function, the PML, is defined on real numbers, and what it's defined to be is the probability that big X is equal to that real number. So it's output value uh, for the random variables equal to that number. Let me uh, list some facts about probability mass functions. Probability mass functions are for discrete random variables. Here we're going to say let out of little x be a uh, probability mass function. At the same time, we'll abbreviate probability mass function by PML of a discrete random variable. Of course, it's discrete. Then, so here's two facts. One, well, first of all, it's very easy to see that because of the definition of the probability mass function, uh, that its output values for the PML has got, got to be between 0 and 1 because it's a probability, and that's where probabilities uh, outcome values are. And two, the sum um, over all odds of f of x sub i has to be equal to 1. So if you sum up all the, the probabilities, you've got to get 1, uh, where we'd say x sub i is an <clears throat> output value of X. So we're summing over all the x of i's, if you will, of this f of x of i. And uh, this is the f of x of 1, the f of x of 2, uh, those things are going to represent mutually uh, exclusive events. And so uh, they don't have any overlap, and their sum has to be the whole sample space. And so that's why you get the probability of it being equal to 1. They're union. Okay, so here's an example. Let's look back at that card example. So uh, a card is selected at random. Okay, we're going to, the same example we listed before, we're going to let x of a heart be equal to minus 1, x of a black card be equal to, I think it was 3, and x of a diamond be equal to 2. And what we want to do is we want to find the probability mass function. Of this random variable x. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, okay, so uh, recall uh, f of x is equal to the probability x equals to uh, little x. So we think about the output values. So here's what I see. f of x. Well, what are the possible output values for big x? Well, if you look back, we had minus 1. So if x equals to minus 1. Have some kind of answer here. And if x equals 2, another output value is 3. Uh, let's list them in order. So 2, if x is equal to 3, and here, here I'll say otherwise. So I define, in this case, what I'm going to do is define f of x on all of, of all. So what is f of minus 1? Okay, what's f of minus 1? f of minus 1 is the probability that x is equal to minus 1. 
Well, what's the probability of that? Well, how would x be equal to minus 1? x is equal to minus 1 if we got a heart. What's the chance that we got a heart? Well, that's 1 out of 4. So there's 13 cards that are hearts out of the 52 cards in the deck. That's 13 out of 52, which is 1 out of 4. Okay, what about f of 2? Who f of 2? Well, that's the probability that big X is equal to 2. When's big X equal to 2? Big X is equal to 2 when we got a dime. What's the chance we got a dime? Well, that's 1 4. Okay, next one. What's f of 3? Well, that's the probability big X is equal to 3. When does X equal to 3? When we got a black card. Uh, what's the chance we've got a black card? Well, there's 26 black cards out of 52, and everything being equally like it, that's one half. Now, if you say, well, what's uh, f of, let's say, minus 17? Well, that's the chance that x is equal to minus 17. But x is never equal to minus 17 in this example, so this is zero. And so for all other x values, we get zero. And that's my definition for the probability mass function for uh, that particular random variable for the cards. Sometimes we don't even list this other uh, part. We just list the f of x for the possible outcomes of big X. Sometimes we do that. And if you'll notice, what we see is if we sum up over the outcome values for big X, and we sum up these f of x values, we do get one fourth plus one fourth plus one half, and that is equal to one. And all the output values are between zero and Okay, well, there's another function we want to talk about associated to a random variable in general. So, as a definition, associated to a random variable, not necessarily just discrete, is a function big f of x called the cumulative distribution function okay, given by, let's get the random variable name, x, let's say of x, given by, here's how it's defined. Big F of little x is equal to the probability that big x is less than or equal to little x. We'll do an example of this in a second. So here's some facts. So we're going to let uh, F of little x be the cumulative distribution function. of x. But let me stop for a second and say we generally do not write down the whole phrase cumulative distribution function. Instead we abbreviate CDF of x. Then here's what we have. One is that if you allow f to be defined uh, an extended real value function so that it's defined on the real values plus infinity and minus infinity. If you say, well, what's f of minus infinity? What is it? What would that be? Well, that would be equal to zero. And uh, f of infinity is defined to be one. So the output values uh, at, infinity, at minus infinity and infinity are zero and one. And two, f is a non Decreasing, I stay the same sometimes, but it never goes down. Function. Um, third 
I'll explain that through an example. And fourthly, uh, the probability that A is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to B is the same thing as F of B minus F of A. Looks like the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. Another fact that I'll write separately is that the amount of jump in the CDL at, let's call that F of X, at X equal to A is the probability that x is equal to a. Let's look at an example. We'll do that card example. So as an example, um, a card is selected at random let x, be, uh, x of uh, a heart, remember that was equal to, I think, minus 1, x of a black card, that was equal to 3, and x of the diamond, that was defined to be 2. So somebody might say, find the CDF of x. Okay, well, remember the CDF is called, it's symbolized by little f of x. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to do this graphically first. And so, um, over here to the side, let me just write uh, the probability, I'm sorry, f of x. Remember, it's defined the probability that x is less than or equal to little x. It's the probability that x is less than or equal to little x. So somebody said, what is f of, let's say, minus 2? Big f of minus 2. That'd be the probability that x is less than or equal to minus 2. Well, what's the chance that um, x is less than or equal to minus 2? Well, how many, uh, how many of the x values are less than or equal to minus 2? None. There's no chance. When we have an outcome, there's no chance that we're less than or equal to minus 2. So that should be 0. And as a matter of fact, anything over here should be 0. And it should continue to be 0 until you got to minus 1 because it's the first outcome value. So if I were to ask, what is f of minus 1? I'm going to put open circles here. And we'll see if we fill it in there or put it somewhere else. What's f of minus 1? Well, that's the probability that x is less than or equal to minus 1. Well, what's the chance that x is equal to uh, less than or equal to minus 1? Well, the only time that happens is when x is equal to minus 1. What's the chance of that happening? Well, that's the chance you got a heart. And what's the chance you got a heart? Well, that's 1 4. So here, the output value would be 1 4. And it would stay 1 4 until we got to the next output value, which would be 2. And I have an open circle here. <clears throat> So this was one four here, got kind of covered up. This was one four. All right. Um, what do you mean it stays that value one four? Well, let's say I had the value one here. Someone said, "What's f of one?" That's the probability that x is less than or equal to one. What's the chance that happens? When does that happen? That happens only when x is equal to minus one here. And what's the chance of that happening? That's one. 
If I were to ask what's f of 2, well, that's the probability that x is less than or equal to. But that's the same thing, if you will. It's the probability that x is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to 2. Because that's the only output values where the output value is less than or equal to 2. Only 2. And so those are disjoint things, and so I add them together. So that's um, uh, x equal to minus 1. That means you got a uh, part that's 1 fourth of the time. And x equal 2 means you got a, uh, you got a dime, and that's 1 fourth of the time. So it jumps up to a half here. And it stays a half all the way to 3. And then at 3, somebody says, what's f of 3? That's the probability x is less than or equal to 3. Well, that happens. Uh, that's the same thing as probability of x being equal to minus 1, or x equal to 2, or x equal to 3, which are disjoint events. They're union. That's what the word means. And so we add up the probability of each of these events. So I get uh, 1 fourth plus 1, uh, 1 fourth, that's 1 half. And what's the probability of x is equal to 3? That's 1 half, because it means you get a black card. It's 1 half the time. So uh, overall, we get 1 here. So that's one. And from then on, we're going to get one. And here's what you say. Um, F of minus infinity is zero. F of infinity, if you will, is one. Okay. It's non-decreasing. A lot of times it's staying the same, but it's never going to The third thing is it's right continuous. What's that mean? That means as you come in to any uh, value from the right, it's equal to the output value. So here, at minus 1, if I come in from the right, uh, th the answer of f of minus 1 is 1 fourth, and that's the same thing as I get when I take the limit is x goes to minus 1 from the right. Of course, it would be right continuous. It's right continuous at minus 1. It's right continuous at every x value. And then lastly, um, the point that I'll point out here is that the jump that happens at each individual X value. So the only time we have jumps are minus one, two, and three in this case, because we have a discrete random variable. Uh, those jumps, the amount of jump here is one fourth, and that's the probability that x is equal to minus one. That's little f of minus one, the p amount. Here the jump is one fourth at x equal to two, and that is the at little x equal to two. That is the the, the PMF of uh, Two, that is, little f of two is equal to one fourth, and that's the amount of jump here. Here's the jump of a half, and that is the probability that x is equal to three. Okay. It's one half. Get a black card, change that half to one half. That's that example. Well, probably the last thing that I will talk about today uh, is the expected value of a discrete random variable. Let's look at that next. So here's the definition. Let's see, uh, the expected value of a discrete random variable x is denoted by. E of X and given by E of X is equal to the sum over all X values such that F of X is greater than zero of X times F of X where F of X is the PMF
Now, um, the expected value is known as the mean or average value of, this, of the random variable x. Let's look at an example. Let's uh, say that we have a card that's chosen Let x of a heart be equal to minus 1, x of a black heart be equal to 3, and x of a diamond be equal to 2. Find the expected value there. So here, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> is I'm going to say, no, the expected value of x is equal to, well, it's the sum, and for this x value, it'd be the sum as x runs from minus 1 to 2 to 3 of x times f of x, where f, a little f of x is the amount. Well, this is going to be equal to minus 1 times f of minus 1, plus uh, 2 times f of 2, and finally, plus 3 times f of 3. Now that's going to be equal to minus 1 and f of minus 1, which is the chance that x is equal to minus 1. That's 1 forward. Plus, it's going to be 2 times uh, f of 2, which was the chance that x is equal to, which is 1 forward. Plus, then it was 3 times f of 3, which is one, oh, which is 2 forward. So that's the way I'll write it. 1 half of that was. And so that's 6, uh, 8, I think I get it. Seven fours is my answer. So that's the expected value. Okay. Okay, we'll end with an example of a fact and example by expected values. And so here is a set of facts and definition. I'll say let G be a function of the discrete random variable X. Then the expected value of G of X is denoted by E of G of X and given by The expected value of g of x equals the sum over all x's such that uh, f of x is greater than 0 of g of x uh, times f of x. Again, where f of x is pmf, is the pmf of x. So that's its definition. Let's look at an example, and then we'll call it quits. You know, one thing that I failed to mention, um, that I'll say now, is the expected value, well, I said it was the average value, uh, but it's a number. And in the previous example, I thought, we said, well, what's the average value of this uh, x when we're doing the cards? And I think we got seven fours. Now, that wasn't an actual value that x took on, but it was its average value. It's kind of like if you uh, 
uh, take uh, two exams and and uh, you make a 60 on one exams and 80 on another and you say, well, what's it expected value of what you make on the exam? The answer is 70, but you never made a 70 because that would be your average. All right, so here we're going to do an example, the same example we've been working with. Uh, a card is selected. We're going to let x of a heart be equal to minus 1. X of a, a black card be equal to one, uh, I'm sorry, be equal to three, and X of a diamond be equal to two. And what we're going to do is find the expected value of the quantity X squared minus two X. That's what we're doing. Let's make sure that's the same example I've already previously worked. Yes, it is. Okay. And so here, the answer. The expected value of x squared minus 2x is going to be the sum over the x output values, minus 1, 2, and 3, of the quantity g of x, which is x squared minus 2x, times f of x, which was the PML. And so here, I'm going to get minus 1 squared, that's 1, minus uh, 2 times minus 1, that's going to be 2. So I get 3 times f of minus 1, plus... Here when I stick at 2, I get 4 minus uh, 4, that's 0, times f of uh, 2. And then finally we have uh, 9 minus 6, so that's 3, times f of 3. And what I get here is 3 times uh, f of minus 1. Remember what my f of minus 1 is, it's a chance that x is equal to minus 1. And what that's equal to is 1 for 1. So it's 3 times 1 for 1, plus, well, 0 plus 3 times the chance that x was equal to 3, and that's 1 half or 2 fourths. And so here I get 3 fourths plus 6 fourths, and that's equal to 9 fourths. Again, we get a number for the expected value. That's what you get. The answer here was 9 fourths. All right, that's enough for this lecture. Thank you very much for your time and patience.